What is up, YouTube? My name is Clickwid, and I am back again today bringing you guys another fantasy football video a couple days now before the NFL season is about to kick off this coming Thursday. And guys, today what we're going to be talking about is the sleepers at the tight end position. So this isn't going to be a real long video. I'm going to try and rip through this thing as quickly as possible, but I want to make sure that you guys get the understanding of why I believe these players are being undervalued right now in fantasy football drafts. So with that being said, let's hop right into it. And at number five, I have a tight end that Ryan used to always tell me was an absolute beast when he was on the Titans, but he hasn't really been performing up to that level at any point in his career yet. However, I do think that he is being undervalued heading into the 2014 season, and that is, of course, St. Louis's Jared Cook. He's currently going off the board as the number 23 tight end off the board on average, which means he's going undrafted in almost every league. Now, Jared Cook has a, is the kind of guy who possesses some serious skill. He is very, very fast. He's big, he's strong, he's physical, but he doesn't run great routes. He's not a great blocker, and he doesn't really have a whole lot of consistency to him. But he started off the 2013 season with a really, really huge game in week one, but was pretty much miserable after that. So we saw a flash of him being very, very good in the St. Louis offense, and then it just kind of trailed off from there. Now, Sam Bradford going out, I think, does hurt his value, but at the same time, I still think that Sean Hill can step in and at least be decent for the Rams. Um, I don't expect a monster season out of Jared Cook, but if you're looking for somebody who has the physical skills to potentially break out, I do think that Jared Cook possesses those skills. Uh, you're basically risking nothing if you do end up drafting him at the end of your draft. If you draft somebody like, let's say, Rob Gronkowski early in your draft, and uh, for some reason you don't take a backup tight end until the very end of your draft, and you're looking at the guys and you're thinking, oh, all these guys are awful, consider Jared Cook. Because I think, like I said, he might be a decent complement to Gronkowski. He might be the kind of guy that can at least give you some points from week to week if Gronk does go out. So let's move on now to number four where we've got Kansas City tight end Travis Kelsey who really didn't play a whole lot this past year but he is the fastest tight end on the roster and he's improving as a blocker. I think that he's going to end up earning the majority of the snaps for Kansas City, and he could really benefit from Alex Smith's play style. Alex Smith loves to, to check the ball down to his tight ends, to his halfbacks, and Kansas City's been looking for a tight end. They've been desperately searching for somebody to step up at that position. I think that Travis Kelsey has the best opportunity of anybody on this roster. He's currently going as the 21st tight end off the board, so like Jared Cook, he's undrafted in most leagues, but definitely somebody to think about if you're at the end of your draft and looking for a backup tight end. Number three on our list today is somebody who's going off the board as the 19th tight end off the board on average, but he is somebody that I think has a legitimate opportunity to finish in the top 10 at the position, and that is San Diego's Ladarius Green. Now, he is still stuck behind Antonio Gates to start the preseason, and I think that there's a good possibility that Antonio Gates still does outscore him, but if you asked me the question, who out of those two has a p the potential to finish in the top five? I would say that it's Ladarius Green. So it's kind of a weird situation because I think that the, the likelihood of Gates outscoring him is good. But at the same time, if somebody's going to break out and have that really big year, I think it would be Green. So I, I know I'm not alone in this assessment. I think there are a lot of experts out there calling him one of the NFL's next great biggest stars, potential breakout type of guy, Julius Thomas of 2014. Uh, I don't necessarily think that I'm that confident in it, but I do think that, like I said, he's got the physical skills to break out. I like him better than Jared Cook because of that. I think that he's in the op he's in an, an ideal type of offense, an offense where Philip Rivers has consistently thrown to the tight end position for years and years. Antonio Gates is clearly slowing down at this point, and I think that Ladarius Green could definitely benefit from that. Now, number two on our list is a guy who was newly acquired by the New England Patriots, and that is Tim Wright. Tim Wright spent his rookie season in Tampa Bay where he caught uh, 54 passes for 571 yards and five touchdowns. Now, he was traded this uh, this offseason, actually, like a week and a half ago now, for a, a trade that included Logan Mankins. And Logan Mankins is a perennial all-pro on the offensive line. So, obviously, the Patriots believe that there is some value here in Tim Wright. 
And I think that there is a real possibility that they could be experimenting a little bit more with the two tight end sets that they than they did in 2013. Obviously, when they had Aaron Hernandez on the roster and, and a healthy Rob Gronkowski, they were running dual tight end sets almost every play. I don't expect it to be quite to that level, but I do think that Tim Wright and Gronk will be on the field a lot together. I think that they have the opportunity to attack the defense over the middle and really make them pay if they don't have good coverage at the linebacker position. Now, Tim Wright also has the added benefit of being Rob Gronkowski's quote-unquote handcuff. Because if Gronk does go down, Tim Wright will be the guy who steps in. Or if, for example, Rob Gronkowski is not healthy at the beginning of the season, which at this point we still do not know for certain if he's going to play in week one. So I think that there's a, a nice little incentive to drafting Tim Wright at the end of your draft. Uh, you Again, just like the other guys that are on this list before him, you don't really risk a whole lot. And I think there is a potential decent upside to him. I'm not expecting him to be that next great elite breakout tight end or any Thing, but if he finishes somewhere between 7th to 10th at the tight end position, I think that's great value for where you end up getting having to draft him. Last on the list and number one as far as my potential breakout stars at the tight end position go, uh, we have Kyle Rudolph from the Minnesota Vikings. Now, Rudolph is a former second round NFL draft pick and he's been a little bit disappointing, but now he finds himself in an excellent position for success in 2014. North Turner is coming over after his run in San Diego and a, and a short little stop in Cleveland where he allowed Jordan Cameron to catch or to be targeted 117 times this past season. And when he was in San Diego, Antonio Gates averaged 111 targets per season. Now, Kyle Rudolph, with those type of numbers, could seriously put up some big, big numbers at the tight end position. If he's targeted 117 times, I expect to see him catching, you know, 70, 75 passes and nearing that 800, 900 yard range. And the other thing is that we've seen him be successful in the red zone before. He caught nine touchdown passes in 2012. I don't know that I would put a whole lot of money on him re replicating those type of numbers, but he could potentially be the kind of guy that gets somewhere between 7 to 10 touchdowns this year, just given the offense, given the fact that the Vikings only really have one legitimate receiving option on their team right now. Uh, I guess you could call Greg Jennings legitimate, but he is by far past his prime. Cordero Patterson's really the only guy, and he isn't very, very proven. So I think that Kyle Rudolph really has an opportunity to step up and be a big part of this Minnesota Vikings offense. He's a good blocker, and he is going to do a great job on fantasy rosters this season. I like him, especially considering he's the ninth tight end going off the board. I fully expect him to compete for a top five position this year at the tight end position, so long as he stays healthy. Norv Turner is going to target the tight end, and Kyle Rudolph is definitely going to benefit from that. Doesn't matter if it's Matt Castle, Bridgewater, or if Christian Ponder somehow finds his way onto the field. Definitely look at Kyle Rudolph. I believe in him this year. I am targeting him a lot when I do not end up with one of the top elite tight ends. So follow my lead on that one. I think you'll be happy. Thank you guys so much for tuning into this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found a little bit of uh, of low-end tight end sleeper value here in this video. If you did, make sure you press that like button and do not forget to press the subscribe button as well because there will be plenty of fantasy football content coming forward. And also guys, of course, I will continue to put out the Madden Ultimate Team, the Madden 15 content, and also there's going to be a, a ton of other content coming out here in the coming months. Destiny's coming out next week, and I'm, or I guess in about two weeks now, but I'm very very, very excited for that game as well. Excited to put out content for that. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Again, make sure you press that subscribe button. Don't forget to leave a comment below as well. If you guys have any questions about fantasy football that I can help you with, I will do my best. Thank you, and I will talk to you beautiful bitches again soon.